This is a great problem to have when you think about it. If you've got just under $100,000 to spend on a 707 horsepower vehicle, do you get the all-wheel drive power Jeep or do you get the Hellcat with the wide body and the wider tires so that you can put all that power down? You know, there's only one way to find out and that is to take them both for a ride. So you probably know that both of these engines put out 707 horsepower, but did you know that you get a whole five more torques out of this one? That's right, this one has five less torque than this one. Why is that? I suspect it has to do with packaging. So as you guys probably know, we have a long-term Hellcat back in Colorado, so I'm about as familiar with this car as you can be with any car since we've been driving it for over a year now. And of course the difference between the wide body Hellcat and the regular Hellcat is that it's got fatter tires on the back, which means that you can put the power down more readily. It doesn't mean that you can put the power down easily. 707 horsepower is still so much power. Think about it, it's just a little bit less than a 740 horsepower Lamborghini Aventador and all that for under 100,000. But the point is it still has so much power that even in this wide bodied variant, it's hard to keep the power to the ground. Right there, right there, it, it was struggling. You could feel the tires losing grip. You can see the traction control system kicking in and I was already doing 20 miles an hour when I floored it. When that supercharger lights up those rear tires, you better hang on for dear life. And that is a good thing about the Trackhawk because now you're not lighting up just the rears but you're lighting up all four so you can actually put all that power to the ground. Of course the Jeep has this. Yep that's right. It's not just a back door but it's also a back seat that you can live with. It also has a hatch. This is a much more practical car and in the winter with all-wheel drive it's actually going to be drivable, whereas that wide-bodied Hellcat, that is going to be a goat on ice anytime the snow falls. Here are three facts about the Jeep that are mind-blowing. Number one, this is the most expensive Jeep that's ever been built at just under hundred thousand dollars if you get all the bells and whistles it ain't cheap number two it's the fastest Jeep that's ever been built it's not quite at 200 miles an hour in top speed but nevertheless like the Hellcat it is extremely fast and number three it's the least off-road worthy Jeep ever built this is not one that's gonna take out anything more than maybe a dusty road or a snowy road you will never take this down the Rubicon Trail, not with these big tires and with this low ground clearance. That's not what this is about. So which of these two do you think looks better? I mean, they're both pretty badass. Let me give you an analogy. The Jeep, that's a guy who walks into the bar, takes his leather jacket off and flexes his muscles. The Hellcat wide body, that's the guy who walks into the bar, looks you in the face, and punches you in the face and walks out. This car has a lot more road presence and a lot more attitude, so there's no doubt in my mind that looks-wise, I'd go with the Wide Buddy Hellcat. Both of these vehicles are batshit, you know what? They make no sense, but thank God that FCA built them because sometimes the most fun you can have is in vehicles that make no real practical sense. This Hellcat is of course the ultimate muscle car. Today, the Ford Mustang and especially the Camaro have become all-out sports cars. But not this Hellcat. Going around these turns, not very happy. It would prefer a drag strip. It would prefer straight line acceleration. Now you might be wondering, which of these two would be faster? down the quarter mile. I've actually asked the FC engineers this question and you might actually know the answer. What happens is that out of the starting gate 
the Trackhawk, of course, has better grip, so it sprints ahead. But because it's so much heavier over the quarter mile, the Hellcat will eventually not only catch up to it, but surpass it for a quicker quarter mile time. So at a drag strip, even though the Trackhawk is much faster off the line, this Hellcat will always win. Let's talk about fuel economy because that's a data point that a lot of buyers use when making their buying decision. And the fact is, if you're thinking about economy, you shouldn't be looking at either of these two cars. The Hellcat has a $1,300 gas guzzler tax on top of its already substantial price. And the Jeep, because it's so heavy, doesn't have a gas guzzler tax. So perhaps the only data point that might be of any relevance is the fact that that one is gonna cost 1,300 more because it guzzles gas. This one also guzzles gas. This is a freaking fast beast. Is it as good and as much fun as a wide body Hellcat? That's the question. And that's the question I've been struggling with. The reason I've been struggling with it is because you think it's kind of the best of both worlds, right? You get the supercharged Hellcat engine and you get all wheel drive so you can put all that power down. You get practicality for your family. You get ability to tow. But, and this is a big but for me, it's a little too... And I say that as God's own laughter comes out the tailpipes. It's a little too subdued. The Hellcat is just really raw, really angry, and really beautiful. The Jeep, on the other hand, this is a much more subtle car. This has some baked in practicality. Now in terms of how does it handle, let's face it, both of these cars are better and more suited to the drag strip than they are to carving corners. But Having said that, this Jeep has so much capability and so much power that you're always going to be breaking the law if you take it to the point where it actually starts to in any way struggle. Let's face it. Did you know that the wide body Hellcat has a towing capacity of exactly uh, zero? That's right. Whereas the Trackhawk can tow 7,700 pounds. So if you plan on doing any towing, you might want to consider the Trackhawk. And of course, most importantly, there is one thing that you can do in the wide body Hellcat that you can't do in the Trackhawk. And let's face it, this one thing is really what muscle cars are all about. You know what I'm talking about? Well, let me show you. I'm here just outside of Portland, Oregon as part of the Automotive Video Awards, the ADAs, where we're picking the best performance crossover and the best performance sedan. Did this one win it? I don't know yet. We'll find out. You guys probably know that I live in Colorado, and of course in Colorado we get tons of snow, so there is no doubt in my mind that if it were my money, I would get the wide body Hellcat. Yeah, that's right. Why? Because that car has so much road presence. You know, I kind of want to be the guy that walks out of the bar with the girl, and I kind of feel like that's a guy that I could be. As always, this is Roman reporting for the Fastlane Car. Check out TFLcar.com for more news, views, and of course, real world reviews. And of course, guys, I'm not talking about like smacking somebody in the face. I, I would walk in the bar and I would of course charm the girl and then she'd see the car and well, you know what I'm getting at.